Every minute, thousands of kilometers of old cable vanish from our world. They're torn from the walls of houses, factories, and machines. And all of this scrap is reborn as pure copper, a hidden treasure more vital than gold for our modern world. Imagine it. Coils of wire that yesterday lay forgotten in a scrapyard are today melting in a furnace at over 1100 degrees Celsius, hotter than a volcano. But the most remarkable part? Copper can be reborn infinitely. So the wire that lit your room 20 years ago might be powering an electric car tomorrow. And stay with me, because at the end, I'll reveal a secret this metal's been hiding, and it will change the way you see copper forever. Every wire you see around you, from old charging cables to industrial coils, has a story. It was part of something, conducting power, carrying signals, bringing things to life. But time moves on, technology is upgraded, machinery replaced, and these cables become waste. But this is where their second life begins. The scrap is gathered from everywhere, homes, offices, demolition sites, even old vehicles. A vast, unseen logistics network of lorries, containers, and depots comes to life. It's a treasure hunt, but the prize is metal and plastic, twisted together in a tangled mess. The first stop, the factory floor. Here, the cables pass through the hands of experienced operators who aren't just sorting, they're industrial archaeologists. This is a critical stage. The quality of the final product depends entirely on the accuracy of this sort. Mix the wrong types of metal and you compromise the purity of the copper, complicating every process that follows. The team here uses a variety of tools, shears, pliers, and specialized stripping machines. The work is fast, but precise. Every coil is unwound and separated into fractions. Bare bright wire, plastic sheathed cables, thick industrial lines, copper, and aluminum. The integrity of the copper must be preserved. It's the heart of the operation. Even the smell on the workshop floor, a mix of old plastic, metal, and dust, tells you that this is where the transformation begins. The coils are separated, the wires untangled, but the real alchemy is yet to come. What were once kilometers of cable are now fed into the heart of the plant. Some call it a shredder, others a dragon with steel teeth. The principle is the same. This beast devours everything. Cable fragments are loaded into a vast hopper. Inside, shafts armed with razor-sharp blades don't cut, they chew. Copper, aluminum, plastic, it's all torn, crushed, and ripped into small pieces. From there, the shredded mix enters a machine where physics takes over. A symphony of centrifugal forces, vibrations, air currents, and magnets goes to work. The light plastic is blown away into one stream. The heavy copper falls into another. The air is thick with dust. The hum of machinery is constant. Operators watch the metrics on their screens intently. This isn't just noise, it's the sound of rebirth. Just like the alchemists of old who sought to turn lead into gold, there are formulas at work here too. But instead of elixirs, there are weighing systems, calibration tools, and purification technologies. Because in the modern world, Magic is just well-engineered technology.
Inside the furnace, fluxes are gradually added, special agents that bind to impurities like oxides, dirt, and residual insulation. They float to the surface, forming a dark crust of slag. This is skimmed off by hand with long ladles, in a heat you can feel through a protective suit. It is one of the most dangerous jobs in the plant, but also one of the most majestic. Here, people witness the purification of old metal with their own eyes. They watch rusty scrap transform into a molten lake that glows like the sun. Even the sound is different here, a deep, guttural, threatening hum. It's the sound of copper saying, I am returning. Once the molten copper is cast into solid ingots, it still doesn't know what it will become. Its future lies in the hands of engineers and the rolling mill. The ingots are transported to the mill, reheated, and then forced through a series of giant rollers, like flattening a piece of red hot dough. With each pass, it gets thinner. With each pass, smoother. This is how copper sheet is formed, or the feedstock for wire. Next comes drawing. This is where the copper is pulled through a series of progressively smaller holes, or dies. It stretches, thins out, but never breaks. Each die brings new precision, measured in microns. All of this to create a thin, flexible, gleaming copper wire. Sometimes, this wire will be insulated and buried in the walls of a new house. The average home requires around 200 kilograms of it. Sometimes it will be wound into the motor of an electric vehicle. And sometimes it becomes the delicate coil in a pair of headphones, carrying music from one heart to another. Every minute, over 17 tons of copper scrap are recycled globally. It's a metal that can be repurposed almost infinitely with no loss of quality. It lives, works, melts, and begins again.